I'm Bill Wolfram, and I'm really happy to be part of this virtual musical postcard that Vadim and Angela have thought up as a way of giving the audience a, a little tiny taste of what would have been this summer. Unfortunately, the North Shore Music Festival had to be canceled as, as pretty much everything else in the world. Uh, so they thought up this idea for some of the musicians to perform a short piece and then answer a couple of questions that have been presented to them um, by the audience. So I just played a Rachmaninoff, a gorgeous Rachmaninoff A2 Tableau in C minor. And uh, ironically, it's, one of, it's a result of one of the few good things, I think, that have come from this quarantine lockdown. And that is extra time. Uh, there are a couple of pieces that I've wanted to learn for many, many years and haven't had the opportunity, but now I have. So this Rachmaninoff, this is the first public performance of the, the Rachmaninoff. Sorry, my piano clicks a little bit. Um, so the two questions that were presented to me, I'll answer the most difficult one first, and it's actually a very difficult question. It's, uh, when were you the happiest in your life? And that actually is a tough question. So I'm going to evade it in a way by um, splitting it into three, three answers, but two categories. One is kind of what I consider big picture happiness, a universal kind of happiness, and then one more immediate uh, instant gratification happiness. So two in the big picture was when I got married in 1985, and the second one is when my twin girls were born in 1996. And in the, in the more immediate gratification, and this was, this was much more important than it sounded, but I'm not going to go into a long, boring explanation, but it was in seventh grade in school. It was in gym class. And we used to, at that time, we played baseball every gym class. And I hit a big three-run home run that won the game once, and this was a meaningful moment in my life. Seriously. Um, the next question was about the Tchaikovsky competition in 1986. I was a medalist there, and someone asked me if there were any uh, stories, sort of behind-the-scenes kinds of stories, and there were a lot of them. I picked out two that were somewhat humorous. The first is um, happened in Moscow Conservatory. Every day we would go from our hotel to the conservatory, and there was a woman who had a key, had all the keys, and she would hand us the key to the room that we were going to be put into. And she was, um, she looked like she was angry all the time. I don't know if she was, but she gave off this, these vibes. And I, I was going, I was doing this week after week. Everything was smooth. I'd ask for a key, and she'd give it to me, and that, that was the end of it. One day I came in, asked her for a key, and she exploded. She was yelling at me in Russian, of course. I had no idea what she was saying, and I, don't, I didn't know what I did to create her anger. Um, and I had, obviously, a look on my face. I was, I was shocked, and I think I made a face like that, my mouth probably hanging open, and suddenly she stopped, grabbed my hand, took a candy out from her drawer, and smacked it into my hand, and then gave me a key, and off I went. All right, now I have a better story. Um, we were, I think it took almost two weeks for us to play our first round in Moscow. And so we were practicing all day, and then we wanted to unwind at night with some cocktails. And unfortunately, I love vodka now, but at that time, I didn't like vodka. So we loved, we all drank scotch. So we went out, and the scotch was really expensive. So we pooled our money, bought the scotch bottle, and we drank it at night. So one day I came home from the conservatory, going to my room, no scotch. And it seemed clear that the maid had taken it. But whatever day she was there, it was gone. No one else could have done it. And um, I didn't want to make a big deal out of it. I, somehow it, it wouldn't have looked very good. You know, American comes down and complains about the maid stealing my scotch. That wasn't going to go anywhere. So I didn't say anything about it, but it was annoying. And it was expensive. 
A couple of days later, I noticed when I came home that my lawn, my dirty laundry had been cleaned, uh, folded, left on my bed. And that continued till the end of the competition. She did my laundry for free till the end of the competition, which was very nice. It's like the honorable thief. I would have preferred the scotch, but so did she. Uh, that's it. Stay well and wash your hands.